Yonko Kaido, as we see him today, right now in the story, versus Roger and versus Whitebeard. I asked this question on Twitter because I have been having a change of thought about various things in the story. Now we kind of get, I think, a clearer sense as to how Oda is going to be moving forward when it comes to wrapping up the series. So right here on Twitter, I asked this question. If Kaido now fought Goldie, Roger, Whitebeard in their primes, how difficult would those fights be? And even though the poll is not done as of this video's recording, you can kind of get the general gist as to what folks are thinking. Right now, 13% say it's a low to mid diff in Roger and Whitebeard's favor. 34% were to say mid to high diff in Whitebeard and Roger's favor. 46%, so almost half of the folks that answered this poll said that this would be a high to extreme diff fight in the favor of Roger and Whitebeard. And then finally, almost 6% said that Kaido actually wins that fight against Roger or Whitebeard. <laughs> Now, I'll let you know where I stand coming in this video, but I do want to say that I should have clarified when it came to Prime Whitebeard and Prime Roger, because for me, it was more so the Odin flashback. I should have clarified that in the poll, because the way I would see it is that during that flashback, what we do see, I think, is a Prime Whitebeard, but I cannot say the same thing for Goldie Roger, which I think is a very important distinction between those two. Now, ultimately, why? Why the poll? Why these questions? I don't think, at this point in time, I don't think that the top tiers of old are that much ahead of the current top tiers at all. At all. So when I look at Big Mom, when I look at Kaido, when I look at Shanks, even someone like a Kainu, potentially someone like Monkey D Dragon, I don't think that the current top tiers of the world are that far behind in terms of power, if at all, from the top tiers of old. Now, if you are an anime only watcher, real quick, you should bail. Run. You should absolutely bail, cause the spoilers are coming in in full mass. It's gonna be a big mom tsunami. And I'm pretty sure none of you guys have that Jinbei Hellsman skill. So I'm warning you now, spores going on ahead. But if you are a fan of Jinbei, like myself, as well as the One Piece series as a whole, it'll be awesome as all hell if you do support your boy with a like or dislike. I'm not biased at all. But preferably, preferably a like. That'd be great. Of course, a subscription to the channel. And of course, clicking on the bell to join the notification squad when new videos are up not just one piece but predominantly one piece it is what it is oh, it is what it is it is, it is what it is <laughs> now, that being said going back to the subject at hand i used to think that the top tiers of the past were in a league of their own things like seeing the yonko bounties where you have shanks kaido big mom in the four billions and then you have whitebeard and roger in the five Billions. When you see Whitebeard's power in Marine Ford and how devastating he was, but knowing and understanding his poor health and his old age and how they have impacted his powers over the course of the years. But at the same time, Sengoku stating that Whitebeard had the power to destroy the world. <laughs> Hearing about Garp destroy mountains, like I think it was eight or six mountains, right before a fight against Don Chin Zhao, who had just come off of splitting the ice sheet continent with one headbutt. Now, we, we can contest whether it's the entire continent or not, but I, I would rather not. Things kind of get wonky and shady there, but nonetheless, still a very impressive feat for Don Chin Zhao, absolutely. When we go to the Odin flashback and we see what I think is, I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna front. I ain't gonna front. I think it's the best, the best clash in one piece. Roger versus Whitebeard. And how studly and how magnificent that clash was. You have the clash of Shanks and Whitebeard and Big Mom and Kaido. Those clashes are looking like D3 Division 3 basketball. And then you have Roger and Whitebeard 
Welcome to the pros, kid. And actually the NBA like top tier squads. He jumped out of the mezzanine to dunk this ball. Like top three teams in the conferences. Welcome to the big leagues. Holy Jesus. Yo, that was nasty. That was nasty. <laughs> and then, even things like in movies, where we see Shiggy the Golden Lion completely levitate entire island chains and then just sustain that for long periods of time. I was like, yo. Yo. I really thought that the top, top tiers of old were built different. I'm built differently. Okay. I'm built differently. I'm built differently. Yeah, I'm built differently. But my thoughts started to change after chapter 1000. Yes, my thoughts really started to change after chapter 1000 because we start to see more and more evidence that this probably wasn't the case. So let's run through it. What is the evidence at hand? In chapter 1001, Kaido notes to the people that can fight against him. And then he pictures Luffy with great pirates and great people with the likes of Roger, Whitebeard, Odin, Rocks, and Shanks. <laughs> the only man alive that Kaido recognizes to be truly great, Shanks. Now, to be fair, if you want to read it in terms of fight capabilities and that, and that alone, I'll put Big Mom in there as well. Because Big Mom, we know for a fact that Big Mom can fight against Kaido blow for blow, toe for toe for a period of time. Absolutely. She is the greatest female in One Piece. That's factual. No one can say otherwise. Absolutely. However, I would also argue that the people that Kaido did envision with Luffy have the capability of taking down Kaido himself. Absolutely. I would argue every person that he envisioned can take down Kaido himself. And then we see Kaido start to apply the Conqueror's Hockey to his attacks when he goes into hybrid form. And we see it for the first time with the Ragnaroku in chapter 1009. Then in the next chapter, we see Luffy ascend to demigodhood and apply the Conqueror's Hockey to the Holy Sandals and to his own fist. Luffy truly is a monster when it comes to his growth rate, like I've been saying so many times. And Luffy finds out the truth about Conqueror's Hockey. And then the next chapter, chapter 1011, we see something in this chapter that I think solidifies that the gap from a combat perspective, very important, from a combat perspective, that solidifies that the gap between the new tops and the old tops is actually not that far. In fact, they're right on top of each other. We have Kaido applying in full Congress hockey to his attacks, just like Luffy is doing after he figured out the truth in the previous chapter. And we see a genuine clash of Conqueror's hockey between Luffy and Kaido. Now in the previous chapter, we didn't see a genuine clash, but we see now in chapter 1011. And when they do that genuine clash, what we see are the black streaks encompass the entire top section of Onigashima. Rays radiating from the horns, black streaks. We get the general gist here, because the angle, we're looking at it from below somewhat. That's how it's drawn. And it's the same effect that we see in Roger and Whitebeard's clash on that island. The entire thing encompasses the top part of the island. We see those crazy black streaks. It's the same effect. And this time, not with Whitebeard and Roger, it's with Luffy and Kaido. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. And then finally, we double back before chapter 1000, and we have chapter 999999. And in that chapter, minus a few nines, we have a Marco flashback scene where Ace, he comes back from Wano, 
and he wants to wage war against Kaido, but Whitebeard denies Ace's request. And Marco notes to how if they actually gone there, they would have lost so many lives. And even though they found out about Odin's death years prior, they didn't want to fight against Kaido and Wano Country because, again, they would have lost so many people in the process. If there was so much of a gap between Kaido and Whitebeard, then there would be, I'd argue, far less hesitation on Whitebeard's part to go and avenge Odin's death. Now, granted, be very fair here, this is before the pre-time skip. Three to five years from the current story. So Whitebeard's far from prime, yes. But he's still more powerful than we see, I think, in Marine Ford. Because Whitebeard, at this point in time, is A, younger, and B, probably less sick. And what also matters a lot, and I just realized it too, is when they found out that Odin had passed away in Wano Country. If they had found out years later, that could be, let's say, two years, or three years, or four years after Odin had died. Because there is, let's say, between a 17 to 15 year period in the Marco flashback that we see from when Odin had passed away in the Odin flashback. So if Whitebeard and the Whitebeard Pirates have found out about Odin dying, let's say three years after it happened, and they still didn't attack, then you can easily argue that a prime Whitebeard decided not to attack Wano Country. But again, as far as I recall, we don't know when Whitebeard and his crew found out. So this is all the evidence that we have at hand. And I think it is a chalk ton of evidence from very prominent people, particularly Kaido and also Luffy as well, indicating that the top, top tiers of now are not that far at all, if not right there with the top, top tiers of old. And there is a certain man in the world of One Piece whose words I treat like gospel. And that man is Don Chinjao. Don Chinjao's words are gospel. Luffy will surpass them all. He will be the strongest person come the end of the series, or at least top three. And the only two folks that could potentially be stronger than him will be maybe Blackbeard and maybe Emu. That's what I think is the most likely case moving forward for the series. I think that absolutely what Don Chin Zhao said is going to happen. Luffy will surpass the Admirals. Arguably already has. Ah. Keep it in the book. Arguably he already has. But he will surpass the Admirals. He will surpass the Yonko. And he will surpass the Pirate King Gold D. Roger himself. If Luffy were to surpass Kaido now which I don't think he will, at least not now. <laughs> but if Luffy were to surpass Kaido now, then I think that means by default, he will also surpass some of the old greats as well. Because I can say now, comfortably, that Kaido is not that far off, if at all, from the monsters of old. I can say that now, comfortably. So, if it's Kaido versus Whitebeard that we see in the Odin flashback, Whitebeard wins that fight. Yes. But it's an extreme difficulty fight. It wouldn't surprise me if Whitebeard got permanent scars, if Whitebeard even lost a limb in that fight against Kaido. Very similar to what happened with Aokiji and Akainu. I think that's very, very possible. Very, very possible in this hypothetical fight. And the same thing goes for Roger versus Kaido as well. Roger that we see in the flashback, in the Oden flashback. So, that is my stance on this topic. That's also the reason why I asked the question on Twitter. Let me know your stance on the subject matter at hand. I'm going to see you guys and gals on the flip side. You guys and gals, take it easy. Stay safe. Have a nice one.